Welcome to Empowered with Elizabeth Namofsky. Too often I've heard young people say, I want to marry a rich person because I'll have more money and a great lifestyle. First of all, that money was made by someone else and it's actually someone else's money. So why not make your own money and be in charge of your own great lifestyle and your own great future? Today, I'm joined by Jennifer Schell, who's an associate portfolio manager, partner, and portfolio strategist at Tree Grove Investment Management, Inc. She's here to tell you how to build your own wealth. Thank you so much for being here, Jen. It's, it's wonderful to see you. Oh, thank you, Liz. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm really excited to get started talking about this subject. It's really important and it's near and dear to my heart. And, and it's empowering too. So what I want to do is begin with, you know, I spoke to a, a whole group of really young women who mm-hmm. are just graduating from university and I spoke to them and I said, do you invest? And they said, no, I don't. I don't know which app to use. So how do you start investing? Yeah, and that's a fair question because lots of people like to see, like to invest. They're getting engaged. They see things on social media. They watch programs, you know, with bling this, bling that, and they're seeing all of these very wealthy people who are quite young making it. However, a lot of them tend to partner up with somebody who's already made significant net worth, or they've already made wealth in some other way, maybe their trust fund or something else. And that's not the reality. The reality is that in order to create wealth for yourself, and to not be like how they are on TV because it's (laughs) unrealistic to get that way, uh, to get very wealthy just like, you know, like that. Um, It's important to really just start, just to commit to the starting point and just to say, you know what, today I'm going to begin my investment journey. I may not know anything. Go in with a beginner's mind. That's okay. It's not about the apps. There are so many apps and a lot of them don't do anything for you. They're just a marketing gimmick to get you to engage with them so that they can show that they have users and et cetera, et cetera. So what you need to do is just start with any amount of money, preferably with $500, just to get you started so that it doesn't waste away with administration fees. So what are the basics then? Okay, I've got $500. Mm -hmm. Um, Too many people right now are suffering from FOMO, the fear of missing out, YOLO, you only live once. I want this, I want that. But the bottom line is people don't think about their future. People don't think about the retirement or even an emergency fund. So let's talk about, you know, how do you begin? What do you need to do other than your $500? Right. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is you need to get your own bank account under your own name. Uh, You'd be surprised how many of my clients that I've seen did not have their own bank account. It was joint with their spouse or partner or they just didn't have one at all and they were relying on somebody else's income to get them through. Just have your own bank account. The other thing you wanna do is you wanna start your credit rating. And so have a credit card. You don't have to get an obscene credit card or an insane amount. You just need something to get started. And then, you know, maybe buy a coffee or buy something, you know, a sweater on it and pay it off at the end of the month. That will establish a credit rating for you. Very, very important for when you're looking to make a larger purchase in the future, such as a home or a car. Um, And the other thing is just start investing. And so you're going to want to start an investment account. All you need to do is open up one investment account, start with $500, and you're on your way. And that's those are the basics that I'd recommend just to get your foot in the door. So, you know, the the theme of today's show is building your own wealth, right? So... You know, in a nutshell, how do you build wealth? So wealth is comprised over two things. You have time and you have money and it's time in the market that will give you those returns. And that's what builds wealth. And you have to be consistent. So today you might have $500. Next month, maybe you can commit another $500. And then as you invest, you're going to be earning either interest or, you know, appreciation of your investment, and it grows over time, but it takes time. And the more you're consistent with it and build those good habits, the greater the wealth will grow and you won't even notice it and it'll be spectacular. And then you'll look at your bank account one day and you'll be like, look at how far I've come. Or you'll look at your investment account because they are two different things and it's important to distinguish that. And 
you'll be well on your way to a successful financial future. So maybe when we come back, we can talk about the difference between a bank account yes. and an investment account. Welcome back to Empowered with Elizabeth Namofsky. We're discussing how to build your wealth. And Jennifer, we were talking about the difference between a bank account and an mm-hmm. investment account because sometimes it gets, it gets confusing for some people. So what's the difference? Yeah, so a bank account is where usually your income comes into it. And then you can pay your expenses from there, either online, I prefer online, and or whatever else you want to do. So it's basically, you know, you have your, your debits and your credits and you pay your expenses out of there and allocate money to different areas. So that's one area. So when you talk about budgeting apps or things like that, or budgets, net worth, it all stems from basically your checking account. Um, But your net worth does incorporate your investments as well, but that involves an extra step. And so the investment account actually puts your money to work in the financial markets and you participate in this whole other world, this whole other financial ecosystem, which I'm deeply passionate about and I think is awesome. And that's a different area. It's almost like when you're going through a portal and you're going into a new dimension (laughs) to do something different. You know, I love the fact that you're passionate about investing because I can tell you a lot of women are not because they're afraid of it. And we make appointments for our nails, we make hair appointments, we'll make a reservation for a restaurant. But a lot of the times it just seems that investing is so complicated that it just keeps getting pushed off to the side. Mm -hmm. And I want you to talk about your passion because I'm hoping that it'll help educate other women in not being afraid of it. Yeah, so that's a very common feeling and it's okay to feel that way because there are a lot of jargony words in the investment industry that can make it very confusing and that it can make it seem like rocket science when really it's not. It's all it is are there goods and services that people want to buy and when you invest in them, they grow their revenues and the magic is that you can participate in that growth and you don't have to do anything. You just go there and say, "Mm, looks like a really cool company. I'm going to put my money on that one. And that's essentially what investing is. It's, you know, growth and appreciation over time. And you get to participate in somebody else's hard work, which is awesome, (laughs) I think. Uh, So once you figure that out and you get your head around that, that's that's the ultimate goal. Um, Like I said, the first thing is to start, but it's like, where do you start? And the first thing you need to do is open up those accounts. You need to open up uh, an, an investment account of some type. And in Canada, we have a lot of them. And there are some that really have special powers to them. They allow you to either save some taxes or not get taxed or to grow tax free. Uh, they reduce your income so you can reduce your taxes. There's a lot of really cool solutions that people don't take advantage of. Um, For example, like a tax-free savings account, it's an account. It's somewhere where you park your money to invest. And it's not uh, a standalone investment vehicle. But there's a lot that needs to be done for the education and to really understand what some of these things are, because these are really powerful tools to help people build wealth. I, I agree with you. And one of the things I want to ask you is, you know, Should women invest differently if they're single, if they have a family, or if they don't really earn an income? What's the difference? Because some people think, oh, I just invest. Mm -hmm. But it's not that simple. It depends on your values. It depends on your goals. It depends on your time horizon. It depends on a lot of different things. Investing is individual to everybody. And there are so many investments out there that are right for you. There are probably, you know, millions of ways to get from A to B and lots of different ways to become successful. So it's finding your own strategy that really works for you. Maybe it's something simple. Maybe you're a really busy person and you don't have time to study the market and study the individual companies. And so there are different investment vehicles that you can participate in that don't require a ton of time to learn. 
You know, and I love the way that you said that. There are so many different uh, investment vehicles for everyone. And, you know, we really have to start focusing on our money because we really have to start saving Mm -hmm. and investing for ourselves and for our future. And I think what has to happen is we need to focus on ourselves and not worry about our neighbors and not worry about, you know, you going shopping and I didn't get that and yeah. not worrying about the FOMO, the YOLO and and the, the crazy impulse shopping too, because that's all debilitating when it comes to your future. But we're going to talk more about that when we come back right after this. Welcome back to Empowered with Elizabeth Namofsky. We're discussing how to build your wealth. Now I want to turn to Finfluencers. There are so many people out there on TikTok or Instagram or Twitter, and they've all become um, a go-to for financial advice. And a lot of that advice is actually wrong. A lot of them are being paid Mm -hmm. to promote a product. And... What do you feel about influencers, finfluencers? Yeah, so the beloved finfluencer. (laughs) Uh, Millions of followers. Do they have substance? I don't know. Uh, You know what? If you're interested in something that they're talking about, great. You know what? Take it a step further and do what's called your. uh, Do your own research. And even just Google what they were talking about to see if it's something that has merit. A lot of times, finfluencers are working for their own money and their own monetary gain. They do not have your best interest at heart. Remember that every time you see a TikTok video or any type of other YouTube video that talks about certain types of investing or strategies, and especially passive income. They love to talk about passive income. They so love, explain what yeah. passive income is to someone who doesn't sure. know. Okay, so yes, passive income is essentially when you invest, you set it and you forget it. And so that can be anything from real estate. Uh, you buy real estate and there are some syndicates, which mean that you're pooling your resources together with different people to form almost like a real estate union. And then you rely on other people to pay you rental income. All great when interest rates were low. Now they're increasing. Guess who's going to be on the hook for that interest rate differential? You will. (laughs) So, you know, you have to be cautious of that. Just because it's passive income doesn't mean that you're not going to do any work. You still have to do your due diligence. Doing your due diligence can save you a ton of time, uh, a ton of money, and a ton of heartache when things go wrong. And a lot of these things that they're promoting, the Finfluencers, are not regulated. Uh, you know, up until recently in Canada, crypto was not regulated. Mm-hmm. And so they can promote anything they want to. It doesn't matter. There are no, there's no rules. And they can suck you in because they're very, very influential. They, all call, they're, they are called Finfluencers after all. Well, a lot of them, too, are very high profile. Yes. And they have millions of followers and they're being paid to promote whatever it is that they are. Mm -hmm. Um, But a lot of people don't understand that if you work in the financial industry, it's highly regulated. And there's certain Mm -hmm. things you can say, certain things you can do, and certain things you can't do. But when you're a Finfluencer, you can just say whatever you want. However, Mm -hmm. a lot of them are being fined right now. Yes. And there are a lot of class action suits coming out as well. And you talked about crypto. Mm-hmm. So I want to talk to you about crypto and, as well, because a lot of people were thinking that it was the best thing to invest in. Yeah, so there's no best to invest in. Like I said, it's what's important to you. Crypto is a relatively new asset class. It's very high risk. Uh, it's interesting, and a lot of people, a certain amount of people, are very drawn to new opportunities. They like to seek out new opportunities because they have a high return profile. They also have a high risk profile, which means that the probability of you losing everything is quite high as well. And so that's something that you always have to keep in mind. So if you do feel drawn to these types of opportunities, always set your target amount of how much you're willing to lose. If it's 100%, then you've got to bear that risk, and that's on you. 
Uh, there's nobody to blame but yourself. And it's very important if you are going to be investing to take these things into consideration. So, you know, if you just want to get your, put your, dip your toe in the water, <laughs> I guess you could say is a good expression for that. You know, take 5% and see what it does. You're going to learn from it either way. So if you do that and you realize, okay, I'm okay with losing 100%, but if it goes up, that's great. Oh, and don't forget to take profits once it has gone up. I always have, you know, a 100% rule. If it doubles, take half off the table. Like, develop your own system and rules so that you can keep that money that you've earned if you do happen to get something that pops and works in your favor. Right. So just before we go to commercial break, uh, what a GIC, mm -hmm. why is it a money trap? Well, it's very difficult to take your money out of a GIC once it's invested. And they also tend to roll them over without, it could be without your permission, depending on the type of GIC that you have. So it might seem attractive that you have that interest rate, but it's locked in. Okay. Thank you so much. We will be right back with more about building your wealth right after this. Welcome back to Empowered with Elizabeth Namofsky. We're discussing how, to, how do you build wealth with Jennifer Schell, who's an Associate Portfolio Manager, Partner, and Portfolio Strategist at Tree Grove Investment Management, Inc. So Jennifer, how much do I save for retirement? Because a lot of people think, oh, I can start when I'm in my 50s or 60s. And some people think, you know, if they're in their 20s, I don't have to worry about it because I've got another 40 years to go. What do we do? Yeah, it's hard to look long-term. It's difficult. It's challenging. And let's just acknowledge that that's the case. But if you really are going to save for retirement and have some wealth put at, put at the, uh, the end of your mm -hmm. working life, so to speak, then you should start today with something. Because the more you put away today, the more you'll have for the future. Uh, so what you want to do is make sure that you have enough, that your investments are growing and that you're putting away a certain amount consistently over time. And it's best, like I said, just to have that habit. Um, so a rule of thumb that I like to use, because everybody's budget's different. And so if you don't spend a lot of money, that's okay. And you might not have to save as much as somebody else who let's say is a big spender mm. and every month they're going on an elaborate vacation to Ibiza or wherever else. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's just say, you know, you'd want to have at least 20 times your money, and then you want to multiply that by 1.4, so you take into consideration the taxes. Uh, in Canada, we're a highly taxed country, so you always want to account for that because it might not be enough if you don't have that much money put, a, uh, put away. The good news is, if you do make that calculation for yourself, it's a very simple calculation, then you can make some plans right now to adjust your lifestyle if needed. Uh, maybe you're spending on things that you don't need to be, like you're going shopping and picking up some arbitrary items or cool things on the shelf. I call it the shiny things <laughs> syndrome that I'm very capable of myself. I think I, everyone is. <laughs> yeah, like, cool. Like, there's a new product at the grocery store. I might like it. Well, just give up on that. So just making those adjustments. I think another adjustment, too, for a lot of people is don't buy your lunch every day. Mm -hmm. uh, bring your lunch to work because that adds up throughout the week. If you're spending, you know, twenty dollars at lunch every day, five do five times uh, twenty is a hundred dollars times you know fifty two weeks. It adds up. Now I want to talk about a financial plan. What yeah. is it? What's in a financial plan? Yeah. So financial plans are very effective as long as you stick to them. Mm -hmm. Many people don't. So a financial plan is really taking your goals into consideration how much money you have, your income, your net worth, which is basically a list of everything that you own and everything that you owe, and putting it all together so that it matches up to what your goals are for the future. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to calculate that rate of return that you need to be able to achieve those goals in the future. A lot of people fall short if they're the mattress people, which are basically, let's, put our money under the mattress and it's safe there. Uh, negatory, it is not safe there and it is not growing. Have you seen inflation? Have you seen how much it costs right. 
for a head of lettuce these days. Uh, you need to put your money to work or it's just not going to do anything. And the risk of the market and putting it to work on the market um, is shadowed by not doing anything. It's overshadowed. So uh, I believe that people should participate more in the market and participate more in growth to be able to make things happen and to be able to achieve their goals. And you really have to look at that. If it's capital preservation, you can put your money under the mattress, you'll probably be okay. But if you're trying to grow your wealth, you have to put it to work. You have to invest. You have to put it to work with these companies. So last 30 seconds of the show, I'm a hopeless situation. Yeah. Is there hope for me? There's always hope. <laughs> Take a before and after. Where you are today, it doesn't matter if it sucks. There's always room for improvement. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it sucks. There's always room for improvement. <laughs> That's right. I love it. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you. As Jennifer has mentioned, the more financial knowledge that you have, the more successful you'll be at making money, saving money, and investing your money. So start now and start with the basics. Don't spend more than you earn. Save for a rainy day and save for your future. Start by saving $5 per day. At the end of one year, you will have saved $1,825, enough money to start investing. I'm Elizabeth Namofsky, and I'm trying to empower you and make frugality fashionable. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.